All right, and we should be live. <clears throat> All right, got a little bit of a late start today. I had to run some errands. Uh, apparently, my full, well, not full art. Um, what are they called? The I think they're called either Art Deco or Skyscraper. I think both styles are in um, Streets of New Capenna. Anyway, I got my Japanese foil jet mirrors garden today. So... I uh, came yesterday, but I wasn't here to sign for it, so I had to go get I'm trying to figure out, like, what, you know, I got, um, <clears throat> what's her name, uh, Savardi, the box topper Japanese foil, and Karn from, uh, Dominari United already, so I'm trying to figure out, like, what I had coming that I would even need to sign for, and, yeah, I had thrown an offer at somebody for, like, I want to say, like, $15, $16 for it, and they actually took it. They wanted, like, I think, like, 20-something for it originally, so. <clears throat> uh, so that's my first one out of the uh, Nuka Penna Triomes in Japanese foil, I believe. I don't think I have any of the other ones uh, right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I ate like an hour and a half ago, but I've been very... I've had a lot of post-nasal drip recently, so I've been very phlegmy despite my best efforts, so... <clears throat> Hopefully it'll clear up the more... The more I talk and the more water I drink, and eventually I'll be able to talk normally. So anyway, we are working on Gearson Starn again. <clears throat> uh, we stopped at the end of the eyes with Ixalan. <clears throat> <clears throat> Come on now. Clear the throat out. So we are picking up with Journey into Nyx. So uh, when we first started building Starn, I just knew I wanted things that ping. Uh, once I realized that that was going to include cards like, um, <clears throat> oh wow, the name's Grape Shot. I was gonna say the name's gone completely out of my head. Uh, cards like Grape Shot. Uh, I knew that I was going to want some amount of storm cards potentially so we've been adding more storm elements to gearson uh he also works really well with one power creatures dealing three damage every time one of them connects effectively uh so that makes a card like empty the warrens really good with him also so we will be looking for cards that um either deal the one damage that are just generically good with this commander or cards that <clears throat> would help a storm deck get to a critical mass for a Grape Shot or Empty the Warrens type effect. Which means we might have to go back and look at other uh, cantrips and whatnot, and other potential Storm Enablers from the sets that we've already done. Uh, similarly to how I had to go back and look for very stack-specific cards for our Braids build once I realized that she was leaning way harder into a stacks build than just, oh hey, we're going to make players occasionally sacrifice stuff uh, that she was when we started. That being said, there's no guarantee that I will actually build a Storm version of Gearson. Um, like, I might just like him more as the one damage matters commander that I started off with. And if I really super want to, and no promises on this one, so don't hold me to it, but I might possibly build both versions, just to see what they look like. <clears throat> don't hold me to that one, though. But uh, when I first built the uh, Beamtown Bullies as my first deck, I built two different versions of it to show like the different ways you can build the same commander and still adhere to the same, um, you know, the same core for what the commander is doing, but go in completely different directions with it. And most of the cards overlapped in the two builds, but there were definitely cards that only went in the one version, uh, where I was trying to just absolutely destroy everybody else at the table with the effect of the Beamtown Bullies, giving them cards that they desperately did not want. And another version that had a more political build to it, where you could give a creature to somebody else to kind of help them out while also hurting the other players at the table. <clears throat> so we did both builds on that one. So maybe, don't like I said, don't hold me to this. I make no promises that I'm going to do it. It will depend on what the uh, core of the deck looks like when we're done, but there's a possibility I might want to try and build both versions just to see what they look like. 
Yeah, we're scrolling past some of these pretty quickly. So let's see. Uh, game plus one, plus one, and flying. No. <clears throat> uh, plus two, plus zero, oh, and intimidate. Uh, attacks gets a one, one counter. Uh, you, ca you cast costs one less for each creature it targets. Uh, so a bunch of the things that we're going to be playing won't target creatures. So that's not going to help us as much as a regular old uh, Goblin Electromancer type effect would. So I don't think we need Battlefield Thaumaturge. Uh, Bear of the Heavens, no. Uh, nope. A number of creatures can't block. First Strike Trample Haste. <coughs> Flash and Flying. Uh, top four cards of their library into their graveyard. No. Is Countermand a reprint? I feel like it is, but I forget where it was from originally, and now I'm curious. Uh, nope, it was only in Journey into Nyx. Okay. I must be confusing it with a different counter and mill spell then. Uh, becomes a tire spell or Billy sacrifice it. Nope. Uh, creatures you control have haste. Each player reveals the top card of their library. You may put the revealed cards into their owner's graveyard. If you don't, each player draws a card. Nope. Uh, inspired becomes untapped. Exchange control of target non-land permanent you control and target permanent and opponent controls that shares a card type with it. Nope. Uh, it doesn't untap. No. Players draw a phase, draws an additional card, no. Doubles damage, no. Uh, cast a spell with convert mana cost three or less, deals two damage to them, no, because if we're going to storm, we're going to want a lot of low casting cost stuff. Uh, and it is commander, where a lot more high casting cost stuff tends to rain, so on top of that, we will not be hurting anybody as much as we'd be hurting ourselves. <clears throat> Whereas, sometimes with Eidolon of Great Revels, uh, you're hurting yourself, but you're also hurting the other player a lot, so, you know, you take the good with the bad. Yeah, and Commander, too many high casting cards. Like, decks are going to have cheaper spells, but everybody wants to throw haymakers in most Commander games, so the odds of you finding the other player that's trying to storm off and wrecking their day without wrecking our own with this guy seems, like, minuscule at best. Combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice Flame Speaker's will if you do destroy target artifact. Nope. Uh, makes two two threes, draw two cards, <clears throat> five damage to target player. Uh, Oriads or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, deals one damage to target creature or player. So the question with Forgeborn Oriads becomes how many enchantments are we actually going to be running? Like, they deal a damage when they come in, and that's fine, but that's a 4-mana four 4-2. Four We're going to need a lot more than that, and I think most of my stuff is creature or artifact. Like, I think enchantment might be the uh, second most underrepresented card on my list already, uh, besides Planeswalker. Possibly Planeswalker might be better represented, depending on... Uh, I got a Quicksilver Dagger, that's an enchantment. Um, Sorcerer have Red Honda. Okay, so Planeswalker is definitely going to be less represented because we have the Red Honda in here too. Um, oops, Shinka is a land, so we want to fix that real quick. Um, Signet. There's Leyline of Lightning. I definitely have more enchantments than I thought I did, but. Still don't know how many actual ones are going to make. Uh, that should be Curse of the Pierced Heart. The word heart randomly in Dark Ascension again? Okay. <laughs> Aston Flame, Snapcaster Mage, Scalding Devils. Vigilante Justice. Was that the human comes into play, deals a damage card? I think it is. So that would be another enchantment. If I have enough humans... Melic, Fire Dancer, Outpost Siege is an enchantment, Impact Trevors, Tremors is an enchantment. Okay, so we have a lot more enchantments than I thought I did. Molten Nursery, if we run enough colorless sources. Um, well, 
efficient construction. I think in efficient construction made one one thopters was like it was an enchantment that did that. So maybe Im implement of combustion, slither blade, soul scar, vizier of tumbling sands. Crash through Firebrand, Undying Fury, Mirage Mirror, Locust God, Makeshift Munition. Alright, so I'm starting to see enough enchantments. So this was Journey into Nyx. That we, like, we might wind up with enough enchantments to make uh, Forgeborn Oreads worth it. So. Oreads. Oops. Yeah, I didn't think I had that many enchantments, but there's been, like, one here, one there, so... <clears throat> Seems to be adding up to enough to at least consider them. All of Triumph. Harness by Force. Any number of tired creatures until end of turn, they gain haste. Uh, turns my things into 4-4 four, four Sphinxes until end of turn. Oh, no, wait, it makes token. Oh, it exiles them and turns them into the Sphinxes. <laughs> okay. Uh, hubris. Turn to our creature and all R is attached to its owner's hand. Hypnotic Siren. Uh, as long as your devotion to blue and red, it, yeah, reveal the first card you draw each turn. Whenever you reveal a land card, draw a card. Whenever you reveal a non-land, deal three damage to target creature or player. I don't think we need Karanos. Like, he's powerful, but he's not doing anything our deck cares about, so... Uh, return any number of target enchantments to owner's hand. Uh, whenever you scry, you may pay two to deal two. Uh, deals two damage to target creature or player. Gives plus two, plus two. To a creature and exile it when it dies. Mana confluence. Uh, plus two, plus two. Attacks if able. Three mana, two, three. Uh, choose a creature on the battlefield. Any number of target creatures you control become copies of that creature. Uh, one power double striker. Deals combat damage to a player. Exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Maybe. Uh, prophetic flame speaker. Oops. Prophetic flame speaker. <coughs> Uh, return up to one target instant card and up to one target sorcery card, then exiled, pull from the deep, <clears throat> riddle of lightning reprint, enchantment, two, two, two enchantment birds and scry one, plus two, minus two. <clears throat> uh, any number of target creatures get plus two power and trample, move all counters from it. Uh, for every five removed, take an extra turn. No. There's the battlefield. Return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less based on the number of islands. No. <clears throat> Wanna attack scry one, tap to scry one. Creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Uh, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Scry one. Uh, 3 damage to target creature, 3 damage to its controller. Uh, scry 1, reveal the top, gets plus X power, where X is the card's mana cost. A temple. There's the battlefield on your control target player, puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Uh, tap or untap target creature, 2-4. Uh, return enchantment to owner's hand. Can't be blocked for one mana. Yeah, plenty of these guys, but I don't think most of them are in any danger of getting run, so... Uh, choose any number of target creatures you control. For each of them, put a token that's a copy of that creature onto the battlefield. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. Uh, whenever you cast a spell that targets Warsinger, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, target creature can't block this turn. 
and becomes monstrous, deals two damage to each opponent and their creatures. Alright, that was Journey. On to Judgment. Uh, Anger. We do have a lot of tap to deal a point of damage, potentially, although Arcane Teachings shouldn't be one of them. I could see Anger being okay in our deck, so... Let's pop on over to Judgment. Add Anger. Uh, comes into play, return target land to owner's hand. Discard a card at random, gets plus two, plus two, unless somebody has this deal four damage to them. Uh, deal six damage, mill six. Six damage or destroy all creatures. Five damage or I draw three cards, so no to all of those. Uh, it is an interesting how all of them manage to start with B, because they're not... Despite the fact that they are all mechanically connected with the Punisher mechanic, um, they are. There's no like common word at the start of them yet. Four of them managed to be in a row. I don't think I noticed that the last time I was doing a deck in red and came through here. Maybe there were other cards in like black or green at the time that were breaking them up. So now that I only have red and blue cards, there's no blue cards alphabetically that come in between those cards. Uh, deals combat damage to a player, return up to X target permanence, that player controls to owner's hand, where X is the damage dealt to that player. Uh, can't be the target spells or abilities, and it's unblockable. Gains flying. Let's see, have it deal two damage to them. Uh, deals one damage to target creature, unless that creature's controller has Dwarven Scorcher deal two damage to them. Nope, I can do infinitely better than that. <clears throat> Counter target sorcery. Make X11 one, one cats. And flashes back for two red and X mountains. Uh, damage can't be prevented this turn. Top X cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom, and flash back for blue and one and remove X blue cards in your graveyard. <clears throat> better dragon whelp. Once you have um, Threshold, anyway. Before then, it's a slightly worse Dragon Whelp. Uh, comes into play, 4 damage to target player. Uh, counter target spell, unless its controller removes their graveyard from the game. Draw a card. Uh, draw a card, then discard a card. It's 2 plus 1. Uh, oh, Jessica. <clears throat> 4 mana, first strike, haste, and tap to deal a damage. Huh. I forgot about Kamal's little sister being a little Kamal, and therefore kind of what our deck is doing. Alright. Oops. There we go. <clears throat> Draw a card for each attacking creature. Uh, counter target spell from cast from a graveyard. And draw a card. <clears throat> Deal one damage to target creature or player. Flashback, sack a mountain. Well, it's a spell we can cast twice for one mana. So, if we're going to storm off, and it deals exactly one damage to any target, so it's doing all of the things we kind of want to do. No. Uh, four damage to a creature or player. Threshold, it does six, and flashes back for seven mana. Um, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and draw a card. <clears throat> yeah, we might be down for a card like Mental Note and Thought Scour and <clears throat> similar one mana cantrips. Especially if we're going to be running past in flames. Uh, each player's upkeep, that player untaps a permanent for each card in their graveyard. Flip a coin, if you lose the flip, sacrifice planar chaos. Cast a spell, that player flips a coin, if they lose the flip, counter that spell. Alexis, Shaman's Trance. 
Uh, unfortunately, Shaman's Trance only works on cards that naturally have flashback, or if your opponent has just conveniently cast Yawgmoth's Will or um, Past in Flames on their own turn. <clears throat> and that, then we can cast this at instant speed in response to that, and if it resolves, then we can cast all of their like, instants and flash cards from their graveyard, and they can't cast anything. <clears throat> so it counters the spell and gives you some options. But that's about the only situation where this card is any good whatsoever. And lose all but one life. Discard a card at random. Spelljack. Two damage each of up to two target creatures. Uh, five damage to each creature without flying, but only if you have threshold. Permanent. In of each player's combat phase, that player may remove a card in their graveyard from the game. If that player doesn't, creatures they control can attack this turn. Wonder gives everything flying. Will Gorger, Worm Fang. Hmm. Uh, choose a permanent you control and remove. Uh, the yeah, I'm reading the worm fang crab, and it's just like, um, I'm trying to remember. So it comes into play. I guess they would just keep coming back until they choose a different card, so they can't. Keep choosing Worm Fang Crab to keep you from getting the three six unblockable, but I'm processing that. It's just like what's stopping them from choosing this? Like, but it's that it would come back and then they would have to choose again, and then they would get a delay of game for refusing to choose anything else. Um, sacrifice it unless you remove a creature you control other than Worm Fang Drake from the game, and it's a three four flyer for three. Oops. Uh, Manta eats your turn, uh, eats one of your land, and also eats one of your land. And that's everything from Judgment. Okay. On to Jumpstart, then. Which shouldn't have much, because all of the legendary creatures have an ally color hybrid mana thing so we can't use any of them so there's only a handful of cards we could even get from this that are unique uh enters the battlefield return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand don't think we need that a bathing dragon fire beetleback chief is a reprint Alright, creature, that creature can't block this turn. Draw a card. Bloodshot, Boggart, Borderland. Uh, we're not milling, so we don't need Bruvok. Uh, tap step, sacrifice another creature, untap it. No. Piracy, collateral damage. Other pirates get plus one, plus one, and it makes a treasure. Uh, dance with the devils. Started deck hand again. Dual caster. Erratic visionary. Um, Deals four damage to any target. Was Flame Slash or Flame Slash Flame Lash from one of the Commander decks, or not Commander? The Planeswalker. Yeah, it's from the Chandra one. Okay, I was gonna say I don't remember this card from any other set, but I don't think it was unique to Jumpstart, and I think it was because it was in one of the Command or yeah, I keep saying Commander, uh, one of the Planeswalker precon decks. Playing Flurry of Horns, Forge Devil. Yeah, sorry, Forge Devil. If you didn't deal the one damage to me, everything would be fine. In fact, if you dealt two damage to me, you might have a better chance of making it into the deck rather than me taking three just for that effect. Functionally. 
Instigator, Goblin Lore, Rally, Lava Mancer, Lightning, Hungry Flames. Uh, deals X damage to each creature and Planeswalker you don't control where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Potentially very powerful. Um, if we go like really hard on the storm count, but I don't think we're going quite that hard on the storm count. Yeah, there's the blue-white one, and there should be a red-black one, I believe, also. Or no, I'm sorry, is it Red green? Because black has the blue black one. Eh, it might still be red black. It might be a red creature with a black activation. I think the I think the there's a green one with a red activation that cares about fighting. I guess we can keep scrolling and we'll eventually find it, so I don't have to keep trying to guess which one it is. Lightning Phoenix, I believe, was new. It's a 3-mana 2-2 haste. Can't block. Beginning of your end step, if an opponent was dealt 3 or more damage this turn, uh, pay red to return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. 2-1 uh, Prowess. Uh, return an instant sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Quake. Makeshift Munitions. Geode. Again. Buxus, but I don't think we're going to have enough goblins for him. Narcolepsy, Octo Prophet. Uh, if you would draw a card while well, you have no cards in your library, instead put five counters on him. Two blue and one, discard three cards with different names, draw five cards. Eh. Tower, <clears throat> Pillar of Flame. There's Pyrostatic Elemental again. Uh, other Minotaur you can... Oh, I think he's from, like, one of the Theros sets, actually. I was reading him because I didn't recognize him, but I think he's from one of the Theros sets. Mystic Study, Riddle of Lightning. Sailor of Means, Arkans Unsealing. Scholar of the Lost Trove, one of my favorite cards from the um, Arena Cube. Uh, especially if um, Sublime Epiphany and or uh, solve the formula, the weird alchemy card that gets you three spells in your hand and then reduces the casting cost of everything in your hand by one forever. <clears throat> ah, Sethron, and he is red-black. Okay. So yeah, the green-red one is uh, base green, then. Uh, as long as it's your turn, it has first strike. Whenever another creature dies, Spiteful Prankster deals one damage to target player or Planeswalker. <clears throat> I mean, I really like the idea of stacking, you know... We deal point of damage to everything, and then some things die, and then we get to shoot our opponent in the face for three, and then uh, Stern uh, triggers and deals two damage to the survivors, and then we get to deal more damage, and we get the... Yeah. I could see this one working. All right, so this is jump start because I'm 99% sure... Here, let me, let me triple check. I'm 99% sure this card is unique to jump start. Yep. Okay. Oops. Uh, oops, Sethron, Sin Prodder, Spiteful Prankster. Alright, so jump start. Spiteful Prankster. Uh, to creature equal the number of mountains you control? No. Thermo Alchemist. There's Thought Scour again, which I probably need to go back and add. 
Uh, dies, deals one damage to any target, has base power one, is a two mana creature. This one should be from uh, War of the Spark. I think that's like, because each one of the Planeswalkers also had like a representative spell somewhere in the set, so I believe that was Tybalt's from that set specifically. Uh, note of that. Field target player mills four cards, no, and Warden. Oh, we got a few more cards. Uh, enters the battlefield, deals X damage to target creature and opponent controls where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Uh, there's Weaver of Lightning again. And Reader Sphinx. And Storm Drake. I don't know if we're going to have enough flyers for Winged Words, and I forget what set it's originally from, but we'll see it again, so... Uh, Young Pyromancer probably has a high chance of making it. Uh, whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, you create a 1-1 one, one red devil token with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Whenever one or more devils you control attack one or more players, you and the chosen players each draw a card, then discard a card at random. <sighs> I don't think that's quite good enough for the deck. Um, if we weren't storming, maybe, like, if we do a build without the storm elements, I might be more inclined to risk discarding my cards at random just to make more devils that, you know, have the ability to die and deal one damage. Um, but for the most part, I'm not thrilled with that, so... Alright, so that was Jumpstart. Uh, on to Kaladesh. It's a 1 1, no. Their hub. Meltdown. Theorist, no. I mean, the Reservoir is mildly amusing when you're storming off and you just happen to gain, like, 50 life in a single turn, but I don't think we need that. Like, we have enough other cards that are winning us the game when we're storming off, and they kind of fit in the theme of the deck also. Like, yes, I could see Aether Flux Reservoir being a worthy addition if we were just all in on Storm, specifically, and, it like, that was what we cared about. Uh, as opposed to caring about the storm cards that let us deal one damage a whole lot, or copying all of the spells that we're casting that deal one damage. Uh, Bizarre Barge, Bomat Courier, probably not. Discard two cards and draw three. I don't think so. I could be wrong. Uh, Torch of... Well, alright, let's read the Planeswalker deck one first. Uh, two damage to each opponent, four damage to a creature, six damage to target player, and each creature they control. Didn't think so. So now we come down to Torch of Defiance. Uh, so we exile the top card of our library. We may cast it if we don't. Deals two damage to each opponent. Add two red, deal four damage to target creature, and we get an emblem... Uh, when have you cast a spell, this emblem deals 5 damage to target creature or player. Not really doing anything that we need. Uh, Chandra's Pyrohelix, though, is another one of those spells that can deal 3 damage to each of up to 2 targets. And can hit any target, so... I don't know which ones of these we're going to run, but we're going to run some number of them. So I want all the different variations so that we can whittle it down to, like, the two or three that are actually really good in the deck, or the best out of the group. Uh, so this is Kaladesh. Here we go. And this is Chandra's Pyrohelix. Yeah, we're not running every single uh, Pyrotechnics variant in the deck even though we can. Uh, we're going to figure out which ones between mana cost, instant and sorcery, uh, number of targets they can hit, like which ones are actually... Because only one or two of them, I feel like, like a maximum of three are going to make it into the deck. So we need to figure out which ones are actually the best ones 
for the deck and then cut all the rest of them. But I'm not going to be able to keep track of every variant and go, oh yeah, no, that one is way better than the other three, four, seven, twelve that we looked at. So, <clears throat> to, to know whether or not I should be adding it to the list. <sighs> I don't think we want to do dramatic reversal shenanigans with the deck. We certainly could, um, and we probably will have enough spells that Isochron Scepter would be, like, fully functional in the deck, even without something like Dramatic Reversal on it. And I did scroll down a bit too fast while doing this, so I'm kind of, like, backing up. Yeah, Combustible Gear Hulk, no. Confiscation Coup, no. No. Uh, returns a creature to our hand. Artifact or land. Uh, return a permanent you control to its owner's hand and counter target spell. Alright, so there we are. Dramatic Reversal. Yeah, Dramatic Reversal is really strong when you have a lot of artifact or creature mana, or when you can just keep casting it over and over again. Uh, effectively looping it and getting huge amounts of mana or infinite mana. Um, and then just winning the game. <clears throat> But I don't think, like, I don't think we're going to bother uh, with the, like, the easiest way to loop this card forever is Isochron Scepter, because you will pay the two mana and tap Isochron Scepter, and if you're untapping a Gilded Lotus, then you have infinite mana. Get two energy, and you can remove five energy or six energy. I can't quite tell. One, two, five energy to deal three damage. But you have to tap it, so it's not helping us enough. Artifact or Artificer comes in. You can pay one to get two energy. Sacrifice it. This one has six energy. Draw three cards. And there's a battlefield. Make two one ones. Four tap, get an energy, counter target spell, draw a card, and discard a card. Uh, deals damage to target creature or player equal the number of cards in your hand. Discard all of the cards in your hand, then draw that many. You'll agree familiar. One damage to target creature or player. Sacrifice it, deals one damage to target creature or player. <sighs> the amount of mana necessary to get this to trigger twice is not... We already have way better options for a card that can deal one damage and then deal one damage. I feel like that's doing more for our deck than that thing would. Like, it's just way too expensive to deal the two damage. It's red in four, and at that point we could cast Pyrotechnics and deal four damage divided as we choose, so... And I think we get more triggers out of casting a red sorcery than we do a colorless artifact, uh, as far as untapping our pingers go. Uh, cost one less to cast for each artifact. Can't be blocked this turn. Uh, play an extra land. No cards in hand. Discard their hand. No cards in hand. That player draws it. Yeah, discard your hand. If you have to have exactly zero... Uh, when it triggers and when it resolves, and it, you don't have a hand to discard anyway, so that'd be silly if they bothered. Uh, scry 2, get 2 energy, no. Scry 2, draw 2, get 2 energy, no. No. Uh, sacrifice an artifact, 3 damage to each creature. Counter target spell... Uh, change the targets of the spell or copy an instant or sorcery spell and you may choose new uh, targets for the copy. Firing Vantage. Apprentice. Inventor's Fair. Begin of your upkeep. If you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. Tap add colorless. I don't think we're going to care enough about individual artifacts. Key to the city. Laugh New Helion. No. No. 
Tab experiment, malfunction, office door buster. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create an XX colorless construct token. And two blue and three, exile summons, return all instants and sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts. So, this is a worse um, Shark Typhoon, but Shark Typhoon is already pretty good in our deck. So, Metallurgic Summons. Might actually be also worth considering at that point for the same reasons. Uh, draw a card, no, trample haste, uh, draws me an extra card, uh, artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time. I don't know how many comes into play deal a damage things we're going to have, or make a thing that deals a damage, or anything like that. I'll add it to the list now, so that way, later on... Uh, we can look at it and see, like, how many things we actually have that that works with. Uh, I don't think we have enough things for Paradoxical Outcome to bounce. Uh, Quicksmith Genius. Uh, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fireweaver deals one damage to each opponent. Again, I'm going to add him. I don't know we're going to have enough artifacts for this guy, and if we don't, we'll have to cut him, but I've added everything else that things come into play, I think except for the pirate one, the, the one that untaps and taps to deal a point of damage, because I know we're not going to have enough pirates. I'm assuming we're not going to have enough artifacts, but I know we won't have enough pirates, so. Uh, target creature can't block this turn. Was stun red in one? Because if it is, you know, I would rather have the Renegade Tactics, obviously, as a one-mana cantrip. Yeah, right now, as far as the instants and sorceries go, we also have the one creature that untaps when we cast a red spell of any type, and a bunch of them that care about instants and sorceries, and we have Thousand Year Storm on the list, and we're trying to get, like, Storm Count up for things like Grape Shot. So, specifically red cards that draw me cards uh, for, like, one or two mana have a much higher chance of being important cards in the deck. Uh, Healy deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, create a token that's a copy of target artifact creature... of target artifact or creature you control... Except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Token has haste and exile at the beginning of the next end step. And search your library for three artifact cards. Probably not, but... So, what we can do with her is, obviously, we can use her to uh, dig through our deck for the cards that we're looking for. While dealing three damage to each opponent because of our commander. Uh, we can also make a token copy of one of the pingers with haste that's going to untap every time we do a thing uh, before on like a turn where we're going to cast a whole lot of spells in one go. Um, her ultimate is almost definitely not happening, but the other two abilities might be good enough that we run her. But yeah, the, those are the ways her current abilities would interact with what we're trying to do. Or, yeah, her current abilities. Her first two abilities would interact with what we're currently trying to do. So. I think it's, you know, at least worth putting her on the list for right now. Uh, choose target creature, exile the top card of your library. You may have Spark of Creativity, deal damage to that creature, equal that card's converted mana cost. If you don't, you may play that card until end of turn. So Spark of Creativity is basically red draw card, if we're storming off. We do need to have a creature in play in order to have a target, but that's true of a bunch of the red 
uh, draw a card cards that we've had. So becomes tapped. It deals one damage to each opponent. Don't think so. Not on a three mana three two that we're not going to be able to keep untapping and tapping again in a single turn. So. don't think we need gear hulk we're trying to do a lot of cheap spells not like you know one large spell where copying that one spell is worth the six mana investment i mean yes there are a couple of spells in our deck that if we're if our storm count is high enough and we somehow still have the mana um if we get Fluster Stormed or um, Counter Target at, like, Triggered Ability on the Storm portion of a Grape Shot or an Empty the Warrens, I would love to be able to cast him and then flash it back to try again, but... Uh, on to Call Time. Uh, target creature on his hand, you may have shapeshifters you control become copies of that creature until end of turn. Uh, creature planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage. If a giant wizard or spell you control dealt the damage to it, draw a card. <sighs> yeah, the problem is, is that um, our commander is not a giant or a wizard. Otherwise, this would possible if it was you know if it could trigger off of our commander you know i deal one damage to a uh two toughness creature and then follow it up with his thing killing it and letting me draw a card but a lot of our spells are going to deal one damage and then we're going to follow up that one damage and so that's not going to be good enough and yes i did scroll past Auron's epiphany I don't think I want to run a bunch of time walks in the deck. I'm trying to avoid my normal build for blue-red spells, basically. So, it's way too easy to fall into the, oh, I'll just stick a time walk or three in here, and then all of a sudden I'm all in on time walks and infinite turns again. And I don't quite think we need that. Uh, X damage to any target, greatest number of creatures you control that have a creature type in common. Uh, four damage to each non-giant, which will wipe our board. Scry three. Yeah, I don't think so. Hold the multiverse. Where you cast a spell, add red, and you don't lose things. Yeah, we might, if we're storming, we'll probably be down for Bergy. Alright, so call time. The God of Storytelling. Uh, Bloodline, Breakneck, <coughs> Brian Barrow, Calamity Bear. Point. Chosen at random, no. Cosima, don't think so. Don't need that. Don't need that. Two damage, no. Bounces all non giant permanents. Yeah, wizards, giants, and lands. Uh, four damage to target creature or planeswalker. Bounces and has foretell. Target players library even put that card in their graveyard. Dual strike. Hammer. Reinforcement. Faceless Haven. No. No. Nope. <clears throat> uh plus one plus one counter on it. Top card of your library. If it's a snow card, you may reveal it and put it in your hand. Two damage. If you have enough snow permits, it does three. Uh, roll a giant or a wizard. And search your library for an instant or so with the same name. Okay, so no. I knew 
it was a card that could get you spells, but as we just discovered by reading it, it gets you spells that are the same name, and so you won't ever get a spell. Unless things are going super weird in Commander. Uh, Giant's Grasp enters the battlefield, gain control of target non-land permanent for as long as Giant's Grasp remains on the battlefield. It has to enchant a giant you control. Two, two, sack two treasures, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, top three cards. As long as you control a giant, you may cast it from your graveyard for blue. Um, I don't think we need Goldspan Dragon, despite the fact that we might be running some number of, you know, windfall, big score type cards where we would get two cards and some treasure. Um, I think I would rather copy those spells and get extra treasures that way than make the treasure make extra mana. Cards. Mob. Breaker, Immersion Raider. Draw card, no. There's a battlefield, scry three, dives, draw three cards. If there are three or more creatures died this turn. Uh, draw a card, then you reveal a giant. When you do, invasion deals two damage to target opponent. Uh, next giant spell you cast costs two less. Oh. No. Science Center Sorcery, no. No. Uh, Magda Brazen Outlaw, no. Sivlit Yara, Mistwalker. Reflection. Omen Paths, no. Are the All Form. Nope. I did have to reread him. I genuinely forgot about his last line of text. I was mostly concerned with whether or not, um, and I was almost positive it did not work this way because I wanted to put, like, uh, Mirror Gallery and whatnot in the decks where I was going to build. Like, I was going to build around him because he seemed really stupidly overpowered and degenerate. Uh, and I do have, like, a deck list for him, but I haven't actually bothered putting him together. Because he's really, really mean, and, like, I don't know that I'm going to be playing against enough people that deserve, uh, running up against a deck like this. Like, or Orvar is just absolutely absurd. I mean, like, win turn two with ten billion islands in play, um, level of absurd. Um, but yeah, I was just making absolutely sure that he didn't have the non-legend clause and I hadn't forgotten about it or something, uh, because if he didn't and we could cast, um, things that would target our commander and make more copies of him, uh, because we, I have a bunch of cantrips now that are in red that can target our creature with that, like, target creature can't block this turn, draw a card, and that gets really good, like, we might want, um... Vesuvian Duplomancy at that point to try and clone uh, Stern so that way we deal one damage to our opponent and then we tack on another four because that'll chunk through life totals way faster and I am down for that uh, opponents can't gain life deal two damage to each opponent only if it's on the battlefield or if it's in your graveyard and you control a giant So, yeah, we might be in the market for um, Vesuvian Duplomancy now that we have more cards that target our own things. Uh, no, to the Reckless Crew. And it's the battlefield. Choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell. I don't think we're going... Like, we're going to have a bunch of wizards. I don't know that we'll have enough wizards 
for this, or that enough of our creatures will share a creature type when we're done. I'm going to add it to the list because I'll forget about it, because I've never done a, um, well, I see what we did, accidentally put an extra F there, Reflections of Lit Yara, two T's. Um, I've never actually built a deck that could run it. Um, I keep seeing, like, we, we have gotten a lot of really good, uh, blue token makers, uh, copying creatures in a bunch of sets, and that keeps making me sad that Riss can't run them, but at the same time, his deck wouldn't have room for all of them if we were to build that deck anyway, so... But yeah, we've gotten a lot of really good uh, blue uh, token makers for making uh, tokens of things that you know, like, they're the token version of the card, like, um, so my wrist deck runs things like uh, God Pharaoh's Gift and whatnot in it, so that way he can make token copies of uh, creatures with really powerful comes into play abilities, like, um... Oh god, his name's gone out of my head. Uh, three green and five, Shadow Moor, Persist, destroys a non-land permanent. Woodfall Primus. Uh, yeah, make copies of things like that. And make copies of the token makers. So, you know, your Deranged Hermit, your Mere Battle Sphere, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'm kind of sad that he can't run a lot of these cards, but he only needs, like, one or two more effects like that. Uh, to replace some of the clunkier ones, like maybe um, uh, Helm of the Host or something. But we keep getting them in blue, because you know, blue is the clone color, and the tokens are essentially clones at that point. So that's why blue has been getting a lot of this stuff lately, and risk being white-green, of course. I can't even put a couple of them in there. But I really wish he had access to like one or two more... Like, somewhere around, not quite this one, because I don't have enough overlapping creature types that I would want to clone, but something like this, where I could make token copies of one of my creatures, like, way more easily. Like, I spend the mana once, and then I keep making token copies, as opposed to, like I said, like, God Pharaoh's Gift is already in there. Um, I forget, I know I tried... Finding space for Mimic Vat in there. I don't think it actually made it in, though. But I, it was one of those cards I kept going back and forth if I wanted to find a way to add it in there. And there's, like, Helm of the Host, uh, Blade of Selves, and I think there's, like, one other card that can do it. So, yeah, I'd be interested in, like, one more good way to make token copies. I'm scrolling through things too fast, and we went past, like, the runes and whatnot. Um which are non-creature, you know, some of them are specifically instants and sorceries on the list, and some of them are non-creature spells, like basically prowess to untap them. So we might possibly be in the market for Rune of Flight and Rune of Speed due to that. Probably not, but I'll add them to the list anyway. Because um, they are two mana spells that draw us a card... And worst case, uh, you can always cast these things on, like, a land. They just enchant a permanent. So, as long as nobody's holding up Strip Mine, uh, you can still always cash them in for the card. Yeah, as much as I might be interested in casting a bunch of spells in a turn to the point where something I could cast for zero mana might be a little bit interesting... Draw two cards and make one treasure. Maybe. Again, similarly to the um, deal X damage divided up as you choose among up to X targets, um, cards like Seize the Spoils, there are going to be like 10 or 15 different cards that have almost the exact same game text, and it's going to be a question of which ones are actually the best ones for our deck. Uh, more so than that, I'm putting all of them on the list with the idea that we're going to run every single one of them. Uh, target artifact or land. If an artifact was destroyed in this way, create a treasure token. Uh, 
three less if you control a giant. Six damage to a creature or planeswalker. Strategic planning reprint. Uh, cast a spell, reveal a giant card from your hand, or pay two. Uh, attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. It's already a seven drop. Creature was a giant, deals twice that much damage. And you can cast a sorcery. Nope. I don't think we need the Omen Keel any more than we needed the other version of it. Don't think we need Tybalt's Trickery. Um, no, excess non-combat damage deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, Torloff deals damage equal to the excess to any target other than that permanent. So if we can get, like, if we can have uh, Starn deal two damage to something that only has one toughness left, that would trigger him again after, like, Torloff would deal one damage to something, and that would trigger... Starn again. And because Starn is two damage, we should be able to get to a point where he's overkilling by exactly one. Huh. Alright, I'm gonna add Torloff to the list and see if we can actually like how often it looks like we'll be able to do something like that. Uh got a fury. Uh, this hammer is on a touch. Uh, return hammer to owner's hand. Uh, three damage to any target. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus zero, as long as it's legendary. Whenever equipped creature becomes blocked, it deals one damage to the defending player. I mean, that just essentially makes the creature unblockable because if most of our guys are going to be one power anyway, so putting the helm on it just means that they will take the three damage and their blocker will take the three damage. So it essentially either makes the creature unblockable or at least guarantees it gets in its hit uh, before it dies to something if they have like a large enough blocker that they don't mind risking you know, getting pinged again and dying. Yeah, I don't think Tormentor's Helm is quite good enough because of that. Create a treasure? No. Volatile Fjord? Probably. Oh, Fjord. This spells... Graveyards or libraries. No, I think I'd like to be able to cast my spells from my graveyard. Thank you kindly, Weathered Runestone. Alright, so that's Kaldheim. Uh, Kaldheim Commander. We do have the blue-white Fortel deck, so there might be some blue cards from that one. The other one's a black-green Elves deck, so that should have, um, like, an artifact that we'll get on this list that we can't run anyway because it cares about Elves. Uh, no to her again. Ghostly Flicker. Inspired Sphinx. Mist Raven. <clears throat> Sage of the Beyond. Uh, spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost two less to cast. But he is a seven mana or five mana when foretold five five flyer. And I don't know how many things we're going to be flashing back, or how often. Uh, foretells for three mana. Turn each creature your opponents control with toughness X or less to owner's hand, where X is the number of islands you control. Nope. There's Synthetic Destiny again. Tales of the Ancestors. Each player with fewer cards in hand than the player with the most cards in their hand draws cards equal to the difference, and foretells for two mana. 
and Windfall. Okay, so nothing... Yeah, I guess the artifact had, like, black in the casting cost then. There's, like, a jar that I was expecting to see. Alright, so on to Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't think we need Acquisition Octopus. Uh, Non-token modified creature makes it 1-1. One, one. Uh, tax alone, no. No. Nope. Equipment or vehicle, no. Ward, no. Make three treasures, don't think so. That's an artifact spell, no. 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 Boseju, can't run that. Like, wait a minute, Boseju, and then it's like, right, it's a land. I always think of Boseju as a spell when I'm building the decks, um, even though it goes in the land slot, um, because I'm more likely to, what like, you can obviously play it as a land when you need to, but I so want to just blow something up with it more often than I want to play it as a land. Uh, containment Construct. I don't think we're going to be doing a ton of looting. Like, we are going to have some number of the spells that are like Seize the Spoils, most likely Big Score and um, Unexpected Windfall. But I don't think we're going to have enough for Containment Construct to be relevant. Uh, discover the Impossible... Top five cards of your library, exile one of them face down, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost if it's an instant spell with mana value two or less. If you don't, uh, put that card into your hand. So the only thing I like about this is the idea that we get to cast this spell and potentially the other spell, but we do have a handful of, like cheap sorceries that we won't get to um, cast for free. So at that point, it's three mana to draw a card out of the top however many cards of our deck. And that seems way less impressive. Yeah, I'm scrolling through things too fast again. So Dragon Spark Reactor requires us to have artifacts enter the battlefield. Uh, puts counters on permanence. <clears throat> gives plus two, plus oh, and potentially abilities. Searches for land. Uh, artifact spells cost one less to cast, but I don't think we're focusing artifacts. Um, oh, it does fly. I'm like, wait a minute, doesn't the mecha not fly? It's like, is it just a flying artifact-based... Um, what's its name? Uh, Goblin Electromancer. And it really is. And I don't think I ever actually noticed that before, that it is a flying version of Goblin Electromancer for a different spell type. Um, I feel like Goblin Electromancer got cheated now. Like, why can't he fly? Why, why, why does the Mechanaut get to fly and the Electromancer doesn't? Uh, enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield, exile the top card of your library. Uh, until end of turn, you may play that card. Yeah, unfortunately, since this is a red artifact, it won't trigger, um, like, Molten Nursery or anything. And, again, most of our cards are more interested in spells, like instants and sorceries, as opposed to um, things like artifacts, like non-creature spells instead. So, it is red mana to essentially draw a card that we have to play this turn, and we can also sacrifice it to other things, including its own ability to get another card out of it for three mana. But I don't think that's quite good enough. Alright, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So, get a 2-2 that makes treasure. We can discard 2 and draw 2. And then we can pay 1 and tap to copy a non another non-legendary creature we control. 
and have it gain haste, and then we exile the copy at end of turn. I don't think we need any of those modes particularly. Like, I don't think any one of those modes is strong enough that we would need this card, and having to wait the three turns to get... What is probably the best one is to copy one of our pingers that untaps, uh, similarly to the other card that I was like, hey, I would like to use this to copy our guys, so that way we can get more pings in the turn that we, like, go off. That being said, you know, it's obviously a very powerful card. It's doing a lot for the three mana that you spend on it. Uh, it's, it gives you a 2-2 that can potentially ramp you. Uh, it lets you dig for more spells uh, or for lands if you actually need them for whatever reason. And then it's a Kiki-Jiki on the other side uh, with a one mana increase to its activation cost. And all of those are pretty potent. So... It's just I don't think we're doing anything uh, where we need any of those effects, so. Uh, X damage to target player or planeswalker where X is the number of shrines you control. So the biggest problem with adding in Goshintai is that we already have uh, Honden of Infinite Rage, and we don't want multiples because it actually diminishes the amount of damage we can deal so i think we're going to leave the honden in and not bother with the goshintai since the honden can target players also uh, nope oh calamity Cast two instant and or sorcery spells with total mana cost six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana cost. If those spells would be put into your graveyard, exile them instead and exile invoke calamity. So aside from the quad red, the biggest problem with invoke calamity is that if it gets countered, uh, we spent um, five mana and lost our card and didn't and only added one to the storm count. Whereas if our other cantrips get countered, but it does potentially let us cast two of them in a single turn, uh, again, after we've already cast them at some point in time, so... <clears throat> it's just a way more expensive, way less impactful, um, past in flames at this point, like, for what we would be able to do with it. And for the same reason that, but the, um, the Gear Hulk is two spells, the Gear Hulk itself and the one spell cast. This would be three spells. Uh, this one is red also, so it has more things, and it's an instant instead of an artifact creature, so it has more things that it would untap to deal more damage uh, that we could potentially trigger. All right, I'll add it to the list, but I think it's highly unlikely to actually make it into the deck. So this is Kamigawa. Oh, no, it wouldn't be under Kamigawa. It's under Neon Dynasty. Neonate's Rush, Neon Dynasty. So we'll put Invoke Calamity. I don't think it's going to make it, but, like, when it does the thing, I think it does a very impressive thing, so it makes me want it a little bit, but... <clears throat> ah, hey, Jingataxis. Who copies my spells once per turn. Same progress tyrant, right? Because of course they have the Phyrexian version of him here. That That's super helpful. Thank you, wizards. Like, yes, it's cool that we have a Phyrexian text version of him, but... Uh, progress tyrant. So... Uh, first artifact, instant, or sorcery spell we cast each turn, we copy it, and counter the first spell each opponent casts of that type. Uh, he might not make it only because he's a 7-drop, but the fact that he copies your spells for free once per turn... Um, is it the first one, or... Uh, whenever you cast it, you may choose new targets. His ability triggers only... It triggers only once each turn, so even if we don't copy it, uh, so we don't get to cast, like, ten spells and then 
copy the one that we really want to. We only get the first one copied. So he might not make it because of that. Like, we don't have all the room in the world in this deck, so... He's a 7-drop. I could see him actually getting cut. I put him on the list because I like what he's doing where we're getting to copy one of our instants and sorceries every turn, but... That actually feels like it's not going to work out too well for him. Like, as a 7-drop in our deck, I don't think we're doing... I don't think we're getting enough out of him. I, we're not doing enough with him. We're not getting enough out of him. Yeah, I tried to portman two of those sentences together. And it did not work out well for me. Um, Kyrie is also a 6-drop, and she needs to die for us to get back two instants and in, or sorceries from our graveyard to our hand. So probably not. Uh, yeah, Kumano versus Kagazin, like, the first mode deals one damage. So that would, you know, let us trigger it. But then the other mode um, puts a counter on one of our guys, so if we played a one-power creature that we wanted to attack with, now it's a two-power creature, and we're actually losing a point of damage every time it connects with anything. And then we have a 2-2 that can exile our opponent's stuff when it's dealt damage, which is actually okay, but not amazing. <clears throat> uh, Lizard Blades is a 2-mana 1-1 one, one double strike, that can give double strike without increasing the power of the thing it's attached to. If we weren't trying to storm off, I might actually be super interested in this, because, again, it's not increasing the power of the creature it's giving double strike to, so putting it on a different 1-1 one -one allows it to essentially deal... Like, okay, so this one can deal 6 damage if it gets through unblocked. Uh, one each time it hits, and two each time it hits from Starn. But because we can put it on another creature, then the opponent blocks it, and the thing that they're blocking with will take the six damage, and we won't lose the Lizard Blades, and we can, you know, pass around the Double Strike to a bunch of our other 1-1s, preferably like, uh, Devil Tokens or, uh, similar creatures where when they die they also deal a point of damage, so that way we can throw around all of this free damage. Uh, essentially. But I think we're going to be doing more damage with spells than with creatures, for the most part. Uh, and I don't think Lizard Blades is helping us when we, even when we do have a bunch of, like, 1-1 one, one creatures in play. You know, if we made, like, 10 tokens <coughs> off of, uh, Empty the Warrens for 5, and we start equipping the tokens each turn, I don't think that would be doing enough. Uh, compared to just turning all of the goblins sideways at various players. <clears throat> so I don't think this would actually be worth the extra card in our deck. But I do kind of like what it's trying to do, like how it would interact with certain cards in our deck, where it's just like, yeah, no, we now uh, essentially turn this 1-1 one -one into a 6-point damage swing every time it attacks. Um, and this card is not vulnerable to wrath effects while it's equipped. Uh, unless the Wrath also destroys artifacts. Or destroys all the cards attached to the things that it murders. Because I think there's at least one of those running around. <clears throat> uh, I want to say it was the one from Cons of Tarkir. Uh, top X cards of your library. You may play up to two of those cards until end of turn. don't think so... Mirror box, demonic sphere. No. 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 Don't think we need um spring leaf drum. That's a little harder to cast, but lets us tap artifacts also. <coughs> tap target permanent. Uh, tap another untapped artifact, draw a card, then discard a card. Three damage. I don't think we need the Ogre Head Helm. Probably don't care about Odawara in our deck. Like, it's fine, but... 
I mean, it is a land that can be a spell, but it doesn't count towards our um, storm count, so... Yeah, it's a spell in most ways, but not actually a spell, and therefore not actually adding to storm. Uh, no to the automaton. The next spell you cast costs one less. Uh, artifact your creature and return to the battlefield. Takes treasure, gives haste. Uh, dig through time with affinity for artifacts instead of delve. Bankbuster, reflections. Uh, don't think we need him. Crashbot, saboteurs. No, no. Two one ones. Uh, funny enough, but no. Uh, two damage to any target and one damage to each non-artifact creature target opponent controls. Uh, not quite good enough. Yeah, I think I would rather have the cheaper ones that deal one damage to each creature the opponent controls rather than having like the non-artifact claws. Um, Simeon Sling is very similar to the, um, the Mask of Emolulation, except because it's giving plus one, plus one, it's actually making our creatures worse, like they're better, it's better for the opponent to just take the two, rather than block them and take the three, and kill them in combat most of the time, depending on the creature, but, <clears throat> uh, makes a three one, so no, this one makes two one ones, right? All right, so for that one, I think it interacts well enough with our deck, where it only being a land. So, so Kenzon. Huh. I thought it was Sokazan, not So Kenzon. So Kenzon, Crucible of Defiance. Yeah, being able to make two one ones that essentially can deal three damage with the way our deck works. Um, and it's taking up a land slot uh, for the purposes of our deck build. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, this thing deals twice as much damage as the number of vehicles, right? So even if we played it, it wouldn't be good in our deck. I <clears throat> uh, can't run Tameshi because he's got white. Completion, Tempered in Solitude, no. Um, don't care enough about artifacts for Tezzeret, so no. Uh, Modern Age, no. Reality Chip, no. Thousand Face Shadow... Creature of the token enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. Yeah, I don't think that's anywhere near good enough. Uh, deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of modified creatures you control other than Thundering Raijin. So, no. Uh, guide Bot, no. Song Shaper, no. Twin Shot, no. 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 Uh, nope. And that's it. Alright, so that was Neon Dynasty. Now for Neon Dynasty Commander. So we need the third one. Uh, counter target spell create X11 colorless Thopter tokens. Uh, where X is that spell's mana value. Probably not, but I'm at least a little interested in it. Creator, Battle Maze, Witch's Clinic, Unseal. 
I think it's more recent than all the other ones that I have here. Access denied. Access. There we go. <clears throat> um, countering the spell and making that many 1-1 one -one flyers, um, especially with the um, colorless creatures coming into play, untapping the one guy, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Um, but cares about modified creatures attacking, which we shouldn't have any of. Played Collision of Realms to their library. Each player shuffled a non-token creature in this way. Reveals cards on the top of their library. Play a real creature card, then puts that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom in a random order. Other artifact creatures you control have flying, enters the battlefield until end of turn. Each non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. four runners, gruel turf. Um, Posture mech enters the battlefield as a copy of a creature an opponent controls, except it's a vehicle artifact with crew three and loses all other card types. Uh, modify creature you control attacks, exile the top card, cast a spell from exile, put a one one counter on target creature. Uh, improvise ward four. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on Kappa, and it can't be blocked this turn. Uh, until end of turn, target non creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature and gains flying. If it's not a vehicle, it has base power and toughness one one until end of turn. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to three target non creature artifacts. Yeah, I don't think so. Menace, steals combat damage, goads a creature, doesn't seem like anything we care about. Uh, cryptic Dreams, indestructible counter, remove the counter, copy target permanent spell you control three times. But it's an eight drop, and we have to hard cast it to do that, so no. Uh, seven damage to each of up to three targets, also no. Uh, 3-3 three, three, Flash, Flying, Artifact, Creature you control, deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. No. Uh, nope. Does Sai make colorless ones, by the way, or is he... Because there are blue Thopter tokens also, okay. I can't remember which ones make colorless and which ones make blue. Uh, create a red or enchantment token named Smoke Blessing attached to that creature. Those tokens have enchanted creature, and when enchanted creature dies, it deals one damage to its controller, and you create a treasure token. <sighs> red and X. For each of up to X target creatures, create a red or enchantment token named Smoke Blessing Attached to that creature. Those tokens have enchant creature, and when enchanted creature dies, deals one damage to its controller, and I make a treasure token. <clears throat> I'm interested, <clears throat> at the very least. I don't think it's going to make it into the deck because it's a bit too um, <clears throat> weird. Like, I don't know if I'm setting it up enough to uh, kill all of the creatures afterwards and deal a ton of damage to their controllers. Uh, because uh, Starn has to live through whatever I'm killing all of the other creatures with. Uh, universal Surveillance, Improvise, and Draw X Cards... Uh, whenever this creature attacks, it deals X damage to defending player, where X is the number of cards in your hand. It's put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return it to your hand. And Warlord Rogue. Okay, so that was Kamigawa Commander. 
Next up is Cons of Tarkir. <clears throat> One of my all-time favorite limited sets. Of Treason, First Strike and Morph, uh, Mill Card, uh, Arc Lightning Reprint, 4 damage to target creature, 5 damage instead. Uh, dies return to the battlefield face down. Uh, this turn face up, it deals 2 damage to each player. 1 damage to each creature you don't control. If you control a creature of power 4 or greater, creatures can't block this turn. Nope. Your own draw card. You want prowess. Sc or tap, yeah, draw a card, then discard a card. Reprints of those. Uh, three damage to target creature. If it had a counter on it, deals five damage instead. Uh, six damage to target creature. When it dies, exile it. Uh, cancel. Five, two. Enter the battlefield as a copy of any non land permanent on the battlefield. What can we copy with Clever Impersonator that would actually be worth it? I'm kind of blanking right now, so I think we're going to pass on it. Like, I'm trying to think what we actually have. It could become a copy of one of our, you know, creatures or enchantments that constantly triggers to deal a point of damage, or Thousand Year Storm. I don't think the Thousand Year Storm itself is legendary. I could be wrong about that. Non-land permanent... I don't know, maybe I should consider them at least. I forget if I put the mirror in the deck already or not. Alright, so this is cons. Oops. Clever impersonator. Alright, we'll consider them at least. If we have enough stuff where him copying things actually makes the deck better... You know, like, if we can copy something that's going to deal one damage a whole lot to our opponents, um, so that way we get enough triggers to just win the game at that point, I'd be interested in it. Uh, dig Through Time, Disdainful Stroke, uh, Dragon Grip, <coughs> Dark here, Dragon's Eye Savants, Double Strike Prowess, on that one, creature to owner's hand, four gray, you may draw a card and discard a card, bivouac, four, five, cast a non-creature spell, may pay one to make a goblin. There's heart piercer bow, which we did put the other guy on the list, so I kind of feel inclined to... If we're not going to run the Heart Piercer Bow, I can't imagine we're going to have enough artifacts for the um, Weapon Crafter or whatever he is. I, renowned Weaponsmith. I was going to say he should be like right here because he's in the next set. Um, I don't know that we're going to have the resources necessary to Goblin Slide, but maybe we will. We'll add it to the list anyway, just in case. Um, re reveal a red card. Turn face up target creature can't block. Three mana makes three one ones. Uh, whenever you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets. Uh, if you attack with a creature this turn, you may cast. When you cast the next instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell an additional time. Well, we're definitely going to have, like, little creatures we can attack with in order to set that up, so I suppose I will add it to the list, because copying our spell two times uh, is probably going to be uh, enough to merit actually having cast the card in the first place. I don't know that we're going to have any given card in our deck is going to be worth... Um, like, a single fork effect, you know, copy the next spell we cast, or copy target spell that we're casting, but, um, 
copying it twice for a single card for only three mana. I think I can get behind that one. Uh, threatens a creature until end of turn. Lion Prowess. Steals a spell. Uh, attacks or blocks. Sacrifice at end of combat. Uh, enters the battlefield. If you attack, deal two damage. That's Mardu Colors. Uh, counter target spell unless its controller pays X. Mind swipe deals X damage to that spell's controller. Uh, flying morph turn face up. Target creature you control gains hex proof. Uh, 1 2 haste prowess. Uh, can't be blocked in morph. Uh, six seven prowess and can bounce lands to bounce it, and it has flash and can't be countered. Uh, cast a non creature spell, you may pay one. If you do, tap target creature and opponent controls, it doesn't untap. Four five. Uh, Sarkin Dragon Speaker becomes a four four dragon, deals four damage to target creature. You get an M1 with at the beginning of your draw step, draw two cards. Two additional cards, and then discard your hand at end of turn. So, no. Uh, hello. Is your name Ao Mai Shin? Is that how I'm supposed to pronounce that? Okay. Hello. <clears throat> uh, Scion. Nope. Set adrift, no. Shatter, no. Non creature spell unless they pay one. Creature four greater, no. We're never gonna have anything that big. Fights. Top five cards of your deck, put any number of them into your graveyard, rest back in any order. Flying morph and bounces a bunch of things. Good old tormenting voice. Treasure Cruise. Uh, raid plus one plus one counter. Owner's Hand, We Fate, no. Uh, 2 1, 4 2 hex proof, prowess. Uh, 2 damage to target creature or tap a creature. Nope. Okay. So, not a whole lot from cons that's likely to make the deck, but that's okay. Ah, good. Original Legends. Nope. Uh, destroy a blue permanent. No. Rampage. Non-flying creatures. Change a thing's color. No, no, half damage from a spell. Uh, for each point of damage done to you from target creature, backfire does one point. This should just deal all the damage at once, right? It's not actually dealing. When enchanted creature deals damage to you, deals that much damage. Okay. Didn't think it would work like that. It's very awkwardly worded because of being an old card. That would be hilarious, though, if every time the creature dealt damage to me, it dealt three times that much damage. While our commander's out to its controller... Although at that point it functionally is just uh, like an impetus or something where the creature can't attack me. Unless the opponent has a lot of life to work with. Um, all creatures that dealt damage to it. <clears throat> uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm just more used to them. Uh, I have considered... Uh, moving over to any of the other things, but this is how I built my decks uh, before I started streaming, was to just use Gatherer and use a Word document to keep track of all of them. So that's just how I've been doing. Uh, yeah, so that's only creatures that got into combat with her. Uh, no more than two attacking or blocking. Mountain walk. A oh, one kobold. Deals one damage to an attacking or blocking creature. I don't think so, Mr. Manticore. 
at 4 mana for a 2-2 flyer. Uh, nope. No to that. No. Tap an untapped creature to add colorless mana. Was there anything uh, equal to that creature's casting cost? And there's no restrictions on using the mana. I don't think we have enough like high casting cost things where that would be worth it anyway. Even as a mana ramp when we start storming. Um, deal no combat damage. Uh, nope. No. Interrupter instant. Blue version of active volcano. Force spike. Gaseous form. No walls for our glyphs. Uh, removes land walk from target creature. Didn't think so. And the blue one will be banding, which is even worse. Um, uh, control by opponent becomes tapped or untapped. Interrupts are countered. No, no, that would be terrible. Go, go away. Eye of the storm. Knowledge vault. Drill sergeant. Must sacrifice lands, no. Is this all opponents, though? Like, they can't have more lands than me. If an opponent controls at least as many lands as you do, would put a land onto the battlefield, that player instead puts that land into onto the battlefield and then sacrifices a land. Uh, it only works when they play lands, though. Yeah, I don't think I care enough to stop green-based ramp decks. Uh, discard a card and deals two damage, gain life, counters, and a drain. Right. That thing. Okay, fine. And uh, original legends, thank you. Mm. We're casting instant, interrupt, or enchantment spells. Uh... As funny as that is to run a six-drop artifact, so that way the turn after that we can go off a lot cheaper. We would have to run so many instants and sorceries in the deck for that to be worth it. It is amusing, though. I don't think we're going to have room for it, mostly because, again, we have to cast it the turn before and then it has to live. But it would certainly make the turn that we go off a lot more... Um, Doable. Lower casting cost on all of the instants and sorceries. Hi, Mirror Universe. Uh, redirect damage. Gives out Island Walk. Uh, two less when casting summon spells. Not nearly as good in this deck. Oh, hey, there's Psychic Purge. Deals one damage to any target. Uh, cast by an opponent. Causes us to discard it. Deals five damage. Uh, original Pyrotechnics. Yeah, even if we were going to run Pyrotechnics, I'd rather run the Dragon, because at least then we have the option to cast the Dragon later on. I can't imagine running basic Pyrotechnics at 5 mana. Discard X cards and pay 2x to return X cards from our graveyard to our hand. Taps an Artifact. No... Remove soul, reset. Hang on. Whenever target artifact is tapped, the controller of Relic Bind can choose to do one damage to any player or give one life to any player. Um. There's no artifact that just straight up taps to untap itself, like tap, untap target artifact. There's a bunch of them that we can spend mana to do that. Um, but I don't think we'd run any of them without this card. I am mildly amused, though, at the idea of constantly untapping our own artifact and then tapping it again and just shooting players. But... Alright, you can only cast that during an opponent's upkeep. 
Oh, right, Basalt Monolith. Yeah, tap for three, and then three mana to untap it. <clears throat> yeah. I don't think the deck's going to run Basalt Monolith on its own, so I don't... And I would need other cards, too, that work with it. Plus, that's not really contributing to either the Storm or the just generic let's deal a whole bunch of damage. So, either of the two builds for Starn right now that I'm considering. Oh, hey! <laughs> really? We're going to do maintenance again? We just did maintenance last week. If anything would make me want to stop using Gatherer for this, it's the fact that they do maintenance on my day off. Really? Really, Wizards? You, you pick now to do another maintenance? After last week? After already having done maintenance last week? Oh my god. Uh, hooray! Well, well, this has been fun. So we stopped halfway through Legends, effectively, because that's where I am right now. <clears throat> Alright. Sure, why not? Well, <clears throat> that, that was, that was entertaining, but, alright, so we'll give it a little while. I'll take my break a bit early, let Wizards maintenance their site, and hopefully we'll be back up and running in like an hour or two. Uh, if not, I'll be back on later to try and do a draft on Arena, and thank you to Al My Shin for stopping by and saying hello. I appreciate that, but Gatherer is down, and that is going to stop me for right now. So I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching. Oh, ow. It's okay. I know Scryfall, and I might I might switch over to that, but I want to actually, like, try using it off-streams um, first, and then see if I want to, see if I can uh, maneuver through it as fast as I'm used to doing it through Gatherer. Um, thank you for the follow, also. Uh, I'm going to end the stream now, though.